Welcome to Layman's Children's Gardening Workshop. I'm Karen Geiser and we are in Karen's Garden today which is just down the road from Layman's store in Kidron, Ohio and we're going to talk about seeds and plants and everything you need to know to get started in your own garden. So come on in and we're going to see, learn all things about gardening. So the first thing about gardening is seeds, and seeds are such amazing things. They contain all the information and materials needed to grow a plant, all in these packages. And seeds are, there's so many beautiful different shapes and sizes. These are rattlesnake bean seeds. Some seeds are large. These are nasturtium flower seeds. They look kind of like brains even. Here's another flower seed that looks unique. These are calendula. I think they look like little snail shells. Some seeds you're very used to. You've probably seen watermelon seeds before. It's the things you spit out. That is what grows a watermelon. Or corn seed. These are special blue corn seeds that my son, Obi, who is 12, got from his aunt in Mexico. So we're gonna try growing some of those in our garden this summer. Sunflower seeds are another one that you would be familiar with. These are, this is like what comes in your bird seed. And some seeds are so, so tiny, like carrot seeds. Other seeds that are tiny would be broccoli seeds, lettuce seeds. Um, so we are going to start with seeds and then a plant needs several things to grow. It needs water, it needs sunlight, and it's gonna need some kind of soil to grow in. And I brought an example of, this is what a seed looks like as it's sprouting. This is a pea. You can see where the seed was right there. Look at all those roots going down and it sends its shoot up for the pea seed. So that's a little bit on how seeds work. And when you're choosing seeds for your garden, it's always fun to look through some fun seed catalogs. They have beautiful pictures and you can choose different kinds of peppers, different shapes of tomatoes, lots of things. Um, so if your parents have a space for you that you can garden, you can choose some seeds. Layman's has Seed Saver Exchange Seeds, which are all heirloom seeds available on their website. And there's lots of fun things to plant. So we're gonna go with a little bit of the garden vocabulary. Two words to describe plants are annual, and perennial. So perennial um, plants are ones that once you put them in the ground, they are there year after year. So they are things like these daffodils are bulbs that are perennial that are there in your garden year after year. You don't have to plant them every year. Some vegetables that are perennials would be like asparagus and rhubarb. But most of the things that we're gonna be planting in our garden are annuals. And the word annual means that you have to plant a seed every year and to get the plant during that growing season. So I brought just a couple examples of what's growing in my garden. Right now it's April in Ohio. Um, and so there's not much growing. These are things that overwintered in a cold frame. So I've got kale, a couple different kinds of kale. This is a curly kale and a red kale. That we have some spinach here and I have some onions. These are all examples of annuals, but tomatoes, peppers, zucchini, corn, those would also be annuals that we're growing in our garden. There are some interesting things that you can grow in your garden. These are dried Tennessee spinning gourds that my um, son Obi grew in his garden. And let me just quick show you how they spin. They will spin like a top. So those were planted from seeds and he grew those in his garden. The next garden vocabulary we're gonna talk about are cool season plants and warm season plants. There are some things that like to grow when the weather is a little cooler and there's other things that love the bright, warm sunshine. Here in Ohio, we are zone 6A, which means our last frost in the spring is often about May 15, and our first frost in the fall is the beginning of October, typically. So we are going to plant some things now in April that will like the cool weather, and we'll wait to plant our warm season things till after our frost. 
because the warm season things, if they get cold, if they get, if it goes below 32 degrees, they will die. They will turn black and die. So some examples of cool season plants would be peas and onions, um, radishes, spinach. Those are all things that we are planting right now in the early April in our garden. We can also plant those again later in the summer and they will like the cool weather of fall. Warm season things are gonna be like tomatoes. Here is a tomato plant that will be growing a little bit more indoors before we plant it outside about the middle of May. Um, peppers are warm season. So are green beans and zucchinis and corn. Those are all things that like the heat of summer. Watermelons are another good summer thing. So you'll want to make sure you remember who likes the cool weather and who likes the warm weather as you get together to plan your garden. As you're learning about growing your garden, there are some really fun children's books that you can read to get a more a better idea on how to grow things. One of our family's favorites is How Groundhog's Garden Grew by Lynn Cherry. Another one we really like is Miss Penny and Mr. Grubbs by Lisa Campbell Ernst and The Surprise Garden by Zoe Hall. These and other books you can find at your local library so that you can learn more about how the plants work and learn some fun projects. And a project we're going to do today before we go start planting in the garden is we're going to use the pot maker which is available on Layman's website and we're going to start some plants inside using newspaper pots. So we are going to start with some pieces of newspaper. I, they're about this size. You can use larger if you want also. I'm going to fold it down and the pot maker I'm going to roll roll it up like this and I'm going to push in the bottom and then the, we're going to use the base and we're going to push it down in and that kind of sets it and makes it into a little pot that's ready for plants. So I'm going to put it in, I like these black deli containers or any kind of pot um, and you can put it in there, we're going to be filling it with soil. If you don't have a pot maker, you can also use a small tin can, like a mushroom can. I'll show you how to make one with that. So we're going to fold it again. We're going to roll it up. And we're going to squeeze in the bottoms like that. And we'll put it in there. We're going to add soil. And we are going to be starting some sunflowers in these. So I'm going to take a couple sunflower seeds. I'm going to push two sunflower seeds into each one. So I'm put one, two. We'll put two sunflower seeds in there. We're going to push them down in. We'll add some water to these because remember plants need, need water. They have soil here. And I'm gonna put these in my house in a sunny window. So once they do start coming up, they will get the sunshine. And then maybe once they're about this tall and it's a little warmer outside, we can take the whole thing out and plant it in the ground. And the newspaper will just disintegrate and we will have some early sunflowers. So here we are in the garden and we're gonna be getting ready to plant. When our children were young, even about age two and three, we would give them each a small area in the garden that they could choose what they wanted to plant. And it might be one tomato, a couple lettuce plants, and some sunflowers. And as they grew and got older, we would do bigger and bigger things. And they would be responsible to choose what went in the garden, to plant it, and then to weed it and take care of it. And it was always so much fun when they could eat cherry tomatoes that they grew themselves, or we dug potatoes and from their garden to eat for supper. We also did some fun things along the way. Sometimes we would plant a sunflower house. We would mark out a square, plant sunflower seeds, and as they grew, it would create this little hideaway where you could sit in your little sunflower room. Or sometimes we did a bean teepee. We'd take long bamboo poles and use pole beans, like the rattlesnake beans I talked about, 
and we'll let the beans climb up those poles and then there would be a nice little shaded place you could sit. So there's a lot of different things you can do in your garden. So if you have a space that you can use in your parents' garden at your home, or even if you don't have um, space for a garden in your yard, you can also do things in containers. This is just a flower box um, that we could plant things like spinach and lettuce and tomatoes in, or you can get a larger container to plant tomatoes and peppers in a container. So we're gonna get started planting in our garden area. I'm gonna show you a couple of my garden tools. This is the Amish hoe that's available at Layman's. And I also like to use a trowel. Those are two of the basic tools that'll help you get started in your garden. And we have several seeds and things that we're going to be planting today. We're gonna to start with one of the simplest things to grow in your garden, and that is radishes. So I'm gonna hoe a little row, and we're gonna plant a little row of radishes. Now when I do seeds, I like to put a stick in. That way I remember where the seeds were planted until they come up. And these are French breakfast radishes. They're kind of long and skinny and they have pink and white on them. And what's fun about radishes is they usually take only 21 days. It's about three weeks to grow. So I'm gonna carefully sprinkle the radish seeds in the row and then these get covered up. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of ground on top of here to tuck these radishes in. So we've got our radishes planted. Next, I am going to do a row of onions. Now, onions are unique. We're not going to plant seeds for the onions. Onions, we're going to start with onion sets. So it's a little baby onion. Um, you can get them at a garden center or sometimes even the hardware store or grocery store. And you can see the, the roots are gonna come from the bottom and this little shoot is gonna be the top. So you wanna make sure you plant them with the roots going down. And these we're just gonna push in the ground. We'll give them enough room to picture how big an onion might grow. So there we have some of our onion sets in the ground, and those just need covered up a little bit. You don't want to bury them too much. The next thing we're going to do are some lettuce plants. And I started these from seed, and I have little plants that are ready to put in the garden. So I'm just going to use my trowel and dig. We'll just put in three of them. We're going to dig some little holes. Sometimes we'll add some fertilizer or some compost. I'm going to pop my little lettuce seedlings out and I'm going to tuck that in. You want to make sure you push things in nice and firm so that the roots are in solid. So there's my hole. I'm going to tuck in that tomato plant or lettuce plant. You want to picture how big a lettuce plant will get and make sure you give enough space for it to grow and have room for its neighbor. And I have a little more space here. I'm going to put in a potato plant. And a potato has, um, we're going to grow from a seed potato, and this has eyes on it. And this I bought at the garden center. And these eyes are going to turn into the potato plants. This one I can actually cut in half. It needs to have two or three eyes on each part. So I can plant each slice of this potato. So I'm going to dig a hole here and put this. Potatoes do like some good compost and fertilizer. I'm going to put that potato down in. That These can get buried kind of deep because they're going to grow a plant and have all kinds of potatoes. I'm going to put a stick on top so I remember where I put that potato. And the last thing we're going to plant in our garden are some peas. Peas like to climb on a fence. And if you're just planting a few, here is a fun hack. You can just use a tomato cage and we'll plant peas all the way around the tomato cage and then the peas can climb up that cage. So I'm going to be pushing 
pushing some pea seeds right in the ground all around this cage. We're going to add some compost, give it some good fer fertilizer. We're going to cover those pea seeds up. And these are the delicious sugar snap peas that you can eat pot and all. They are so sweet and our children love them. So now that we have everything in the ground, we're going to water things. We're going to make sure those seeds get enough water to wake up. Watering our peas, watering our radishes, make sure onions have a little bit, make sure our lettuce is watered, get that potato warmed up. and. We now have our garden planted and we're going to wait to see some sprouts and hopefully we'll be eating some good radishes, onions, lettuce, potatoes, and peas. In another month, when it's about the middle of May and it's a lot warmer, I will add it to another tomato cage here and we'll add this tomato plant. By then, he might be quite a bit taller. This is a cherry tomato that is delicious to eat right out of the garden. Another thing you might want to add to your garden are some flowers. Flowers are really valuable for attracting pollinators that will help your plants pollinate and it'll also just make your garden a happy place to be. Well, I hope this gives you some ideas to get started in your own garden. Make sure you talk to parents or grandparents or neighbors who love to garden. See what you can learn from them. See if you can help them. And they will give you ideas on how to get your own garden started. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out Layman's.com for garden supplies and seeds, and I hope you have a happy year growing.